In this video, we're going to build an app which integrates camera functionality, allowing the user to take a picture and display the image in our application. Here's the demo of what we're going to build. Right now we have an image view here which just has some dummy icon. But if I tap on this take picture button, we're opening up the camera application which is already on the Android device. On this screen, I can move around. And then once I'm happy with something, I'll take a picture. And once I confirm this picture, we return back into our application and we render that image inside of this image view. Let's learn how to build this. There are two ways to integrate the camera in our application. The first way, which is easier, and that's what we'll be going through in this video, is to use the default camera app, which is already on every Android device. This is the fastest way to integrate camera functionality in your app, but you do give up some control. So if you want more control, you'll have to go with the harder route, which is to embed the camera in your app using the camera API. This is significantly more code and it requires your app to have the camera permission because your app will be the one taking the image as opposed to delegating that work to another application. This approach allows for customizations of the camera so you can have control over the camera controls, allowing the user to add filters and things like that. So what I recommend is use option one, the easier approach, unless the camera is really core to your application. For example, if you're building something like Snapchat or Instagram where you want fine-grained control over the camera experience, you can then invest the time to do number two. However, for most apps, I recommend you do number one, which is what we'll be going through in this video. The way we'll achieve the first path for integration is by using an intent to launch the existing camera app. Intents are really fundamental to Android. You can think of an intent as a request that is given to an activity within your own app, an external application, or a built-in Android service. In our case, we're going to launch something called an implicit intent to launch an external application, and the external application will be the camera app. So here's what this might look like. If you only need a low-quality image, we're going to implement that version first, and then later on, I'll show you how to get the high-quality image. But in this example, um, our application is going to call this method start activity for result with the intent. Then that will open up the camera app and the camera app will return control back to our application with the image data and that will be located inside of the intent as something called a data extra. And then, then we can use that to render our image. What I have here is an empty activity starter project with language of Kotlin selected. And the first thing I want to do is go into activity main.xml, the layout file, and update it. The first thing I'll do is actually update this to be a linear layout, and the orientation of this will be vertical. We want two widgets here instead of the text view. One is the button, which will launch the camera. And then second, we want an image view, which will render the image taken in the camera application. There's nothing that interesting happening here. The button I'm centering horizontally at the top of the screen, and then below that is the image view, which I'm hard coding the height to be 400 dp, and the source of it, the image is actually going to initially render this thing called the IC launcher, and you can go into the design tab and see what that looks like. Now we're done with the layout for our application. We'll spend the majority of our time in main activity. The first thing we'll do is add a click listener on the button, and when the user taps on the button, we want to launch the intent to open up the camera. So we're going to create a new intent, which I'll call take picture intent. And here we need to specify what action we want to achieve. So I'll say media store dot action capture image. And now we can just call this method start activity for result with the intent. And we also need to pass in a request code. So I'm going to make this a constant because we'll need to refer to it when we come back into our application. And this can be any arbitrary number. So I'll just make it 42. One other best practice is that you want to guard the call to start activity for result and check if there is any application on the device which can handle this intent. Basically, we want to check, is there any camera application on the device? And the answer should almost always be yes, but we want to make sure that we're not crashing the app in case, for whatever reason, there is no camera app. The way we do this is just check if the take picture intent resolve activity and we had to pass in the package manager. If this is not null, that means that it's valid. Then we can call this successfully. Otherwise, I'm just gonna create our toast. 
Once we've opened up the camera application on the device, the user can either take a picture or cancel out of that flow. In either case, we will get into a method called onActivityResult, which will override. The first thing we'll check here is if the request code is equal to the request code that we passed in. Also, we should check if the result code is equal to the result OK, which is something defined on the activity. If both of these are true, that means that the user has successfully taken a picture from the camera. Now we can use the intent data that's passed in and get the bitmap out of that. So we'll say data dot extras, and this is a bundle. And then from here, we can look into the key value pairs and we are going to be interested in a key called data, which is where the camera will store a low quality version of the image. And this is nullable, so we need to add question marks here. And this is going to be take an image. Now that we have this image, we're going to cast it as a bitmap. And we can put this bitmap into the image view. Otherwise, we'll just call the super method. There's one more thing I want to do before we run our application. If you open up the build.gradle file, which is located in the app module, I want to look at the target SDK version. So if your target SDK version is 29, otherwise known as Android 10 or Android Q, then you'll experience some tighter restrictions around storage APIs. In particular, there's something called scope storage. And I'll leave a link to more details about what that means. But basically, if you're targeting API 29 or higher, then what you need to do is add one more permission in the manifest file. So open up the manifest file and add read external storage. Without this, when the camera application launches, you'll encounter a crash. And so once you have that, now we should be able to run our application. So if I tap on take picture, this is on emulator, the camera app, and you can see a view of this nice room, 3D room. I can zoom around, and there's a picture of a dog here. So I'll take the image, and then you have the option here to either try again, cancel, or submit this, or accept this. And now, as expected, we are able to render that picture of a dog inside our image view. One thing you'll notice is that this image is low quality. You'll notice some graininess. In order to remedy that, there's another way to retrieve the image that the user has taken from the camera application, and that's what we'll talk about next. The approach we've taken now allows us to get a low quality image, which is basically only suitable for an icon. The reason we can't get the full image is because there's a one megabyte limit on the data you can send between apps in the intent bundle as we're doing here. Since most images are larger than one megabyte, Android can't send the whole image. In order to get a higher quality image, we have to do something a bit more complicated, which is to pass in a file location when we call start activity for result. So here we passed in this file location in directory a slash b slash pictures and a file name of photo.jpg. Now the camera application, when the user takes a photo, will save the image to that file. Now we'll call on activity result like normal, but instead of looking at the picture coming from the intent data, we can read the image from the file, and that can be much higher quality. So that's how we'll solve this problem. The first thing we'll do is create a photo file variable, which represents the location where the camera application should write the image which is captured. So we'll make this a late init var called photo file. This is a type file. When we create the intent, that's when we want to create this photo file. And I'm going to delegate the work of that to a method called get photo file. And this will take in a parameter which is called file name. This is going to be the name of the file which is created. So let's find that. And we'll just make this simple and call it photo.jpg. Now let's define this method. There's already a method on the context to access package specific directories. So let me copy over this comment, which explains what we're doing. So on the context object, we'll call this get external files directory. And we're going to pass in the environment of the pictures, which is already a constant on the environment class. So directory pictures. This is the storage directory where we're going to put the photo. And now all we need to do is return a temp file, 
with the file name that was passed in, the suffix, which is .jpg, and the storage directory. Now that we have the photo file, what we'd like to be able to do is pass this in as an extra to the intent as a way to specify where the photo that the camera app takes should live. So something that looks like this. There's a special constant for the output, and we'd like to be able to pass in the photo file here. Unfortunately, this doesn't work due to some security changes in Android, starting with API 24. The security issue is that private file URI resources can't be shared between processes. Instead, we have to wrap the file object as a content provider using the file provider class. So the way that looks is we say file provider dot get URI for file, pass in a context, and then an authority. And what I recommend for the authority is that you take your package name and then add file provider at the end, and then pass file. Let's comment this out, this doesn't work. And this will return to us a file provider which is what we'll pass in to the intent. By using a file provider, we can create a content URI which allows temporary access to the app that we're delegating to, in our case, the camera app. So contrast this with passing an actual file. In that scenario, we have to change the underlying permissions of that file so any app might be able to read or write to that location, which is insecure. So this file provider approach that Android has taken allows us to do content sharing in a much more secure way. What we have to do next is go into Android Manifest and update the application to indicate that this app is a file provider. I'll add a provider tag here. The authorities is going to match the authority that we added in manactivity.kotlin. So in my case, it's my package name followed by file provider. Next, we have to provide a name and you should pass in file provider here. And there are two more attributes. One is called exported and pass in false. And the other is grant URI permissions and we'll pass in true. Inside the file provider tag, let's provide a metadata tag. A file provider can only generate a content URI for files in directories that you specify beforehand. And that's what we'll do with this metadata tag. So we'll specify Android name, and this will always be android.support.fileproviderpaths. And then the next thing is a resource file, and this will be at XML slash, and you can give it whatever name you want, but I'll just call mine file provider. Now we'll let Android Studio help us to create this XML resource file. And go into the text tab, and let's delete the preference screen which came in by default and pass in paths and we're going to pass in one tag here there's a couple different options you have but we'll use external file paths the name will be images and the path will be pictures the reason we're specifying pictures here is because that's what is the value of environment directory pictures if you go into that you can see it's pictures so we're basically saying that any content which is inside the external file directory with pictures, those are the things that we can create a content URI for so they can be shared. The last thing we need to do is instead of checking the data key of the intent bundle from on activity result, we should instead use the photo file that we passed in when we were launching the camera application. The way we can do that is generate a bitmap. So I'll comment this out and I'll just generate another bitmap, take an image, this is from the bitmap factory and we'll decode a file and we want to pass in the path name so this is going to be as simple as photo file dot absolute path okay let's try it if we take a picture we're looking at the dog again i'm going to leave it in the same position so we can compare the quality of the image save it and now you can see the image we're rendering is coming from a file which is larger than one megabyte. So the quality of this image is higher. As a review, what we've done here is use the file provider to securely pass the location of a file to the camera application. The camera application will save an image to that file. And then in on activity result, we can read that image from that specified file to show it in our application. This is a bit more work than the earlier approach where we simply read the image data out of the intent bundle. But the issue there is that we get a low quality image. 
I'll leave links to some really helpful guides to explain this further in the description. Let me know if you have any questions. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.